Hi there, welcome to the video. Welcome back to the True Crime Dylan Rounds community in which today we're going to be analysing what Bob Farrell has had to say about Warlight Ref. Bob calling Warlight Ref and questioning his credibility when it comes to coverage on the Dylan Rounds case and their true intentions. Well, most certainly I'll be taking a look at that, providing to you the proof and evidence as well to back things up, and as well just to simply defend myself through the normal formal procedures. So hopefully you can stick around for most of this video to understand what's gone on recently, and I'll be sharing with you my thoughts too. We'll be comparing and contrasting as well these different individuals, okay, to get to a better conclusion, I guess. Welcome to anyone that is currently watching in this live premiere. I appreciate it. As we do go throughout this video, be sure to share your thoughts, opinions, reactions in the live chat box on the right-hand side of the screen. If you do have any grievances or questions, list them down below in the comments section. Besides the main part today, talking about what Bob Farrell has recently said, which in a sense, depending on how you interpret it, kind of false misinformation in a way, besides the channel in general and um, the people that may come on at times. Besides that, if there is time later on in this video, I might refer back to the comment section of a previous video just to catch up there. We'll just see how the flow goes today. Also, you would have seen in the title, we do have an exclusive interview later on. So make sure to stick around. I know, Bob. I know, Bob. Hold it, hold it. Yes, an exclusive interview. Just calm it down, bub. We don't want you having a stroke. Not that one. But um, yeah, that'll be coming later. I just want to briefly like introduce what's happened recently, okay? Such as like last night. So once again, been covering Dylan Round's videos to keep the case alive and to make sense of stuff as a heads up, providing there's no roadblocks or anything else after this, I'd hope to be making another Dylan Rounds video tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that. Um, Christy did pop in with a good idea recently, so we will be acknowledging it and looking back because it's, it's a critical point, okay? So just know that an interesting Dylan Rounds video is coming out shortly and it is reflecting back on an interesting aspect which may have been overlooked in some way and it might also not contradict Candice Cooley, but make her stand out with her own point, which may now be seen as invalid, right? But more about that tomorrow. As of right now, if you would like to catch up on previous videos, what I've done on the case, feel free to check back on my channel. It's all there, easy to find, over 400 videos on the case, pretty dedicated. Some would disagree. Mm. But feel free to catch up on the videos when you do have time. As for last night as well, I actually did a live stream test. I know, Bob. I know, Bob. Calm it down. Calm down. Don't have heart palpitations. You know, just lower your pulse, okay? Not to the point of flatlining, but just calm it down, okay? It's not the first time I've done live streams at night. You know, done a little test here and there and messed about and it worked. But more so specifically last night, it was on another level. And it was somewhat successful, right? It was like a members only live stream because YouTube implemented a new feature on YouTube recently. But more importantly, YouTube added the horizontal mode. So when I start live streams on phone, it's always vertical. If I rotate the screen, the screen doesn't rotate with the phone. So you can have looking at it maybe upside down or on its side. But thankfully, YouTube added the horizontal feature in before you begin the live stream. So it makes everything a lot better now, as well as the aspect ratio. Because I think when you're doing it vertical, yeah, it's okay if other people are watching it on mobile devices. But if people are catching up on TV, computer, it's going to be smaller, the aspect ratio. Especially the TV. When it comes to watching a short video on TV screen, stat size, miniature you get the idea. So certain formats do work for certain types of videos and lamps, but I think live streams tend to be more popular in a horizontal way, unless you may be on a different platform, right? I think if you're on Instagram, TikTok, it's always going to be vertical live streams that are the most popular, just because of the format and style of the channel. 
and the platforms, whereas YouTube, Twitch are more horizontal based, just um, if you didn't quite know that, right? So some recent stuff going on, which is all good, and it's always fun to test out the new features on YouTube. If there's been new updates recently added, you just slowly have a look at it bit by bit, get a grip of it, try and understand it, and maybe it can be incorporated into videos, etc. I'm sure there'll be more updates down the line. I know YouTube can be very dodgy, but at least they do add in some new features over time, right? So besides all that, the only other thing I want to do is brief shout out to Badger recently for the presence for the Super Chat, very good of Badger. Shout out to Shicho recently for them popping back in, as well as Proud Mimi. Um, and then if there's any others in the background that have showed up, and I guess welcome to, you know, I've seen some new names, maybe there's some returning people from the past who I wasn't quite aware of, but welcome to all the new people that are watching, whether it be right now or in last night's video. It's good if new people do come on in because they might become interested in the case. And then, you know, it's a fresh pair of eyes, a fresh mindset. They may see things other people don't see in the Dylan Rounds case. But I think the most important part is, and I think this might be a standalone video, so take this in mind, okay? There will be another Dylan Rounds standalone video coming out in maybe two, three days' time, we'll see. And it's to do with, yes, it's good how new people come on into the case, but it depends and it's critical as to where they go for the information or where they go about. It's not about controlling people, what they can and can't do, but at least giving them awareness of who is who and what certain people are capable of and their possible motives. Because if people start going astray, leading astray, going down a rabbit hole, which some people have done already, and maybe the odd people on my channel over time have gone down the odd rabbit holes because that negative influence, that negative force out there in the true crime community, right? There'll be a lot of dodginess that goes on out there and it can mess up people's mindsets and it can misdirect new people, impressionable viewers coming in for the first time. And what good does that do? It doesn't really do much good. So that can be a standalone video in itself. Now, with that all out of the way, shout out to there's any other people in the background who have done Super Chats recently. I can't always remember everyone's name, but shout out to the people. It's good of them. So now we get into the main talk of this video. Welcome to those that are watching right now. And hopefully, Bob Fowl, you are still watching. Or if you have just suddenly tuned in, make sure to listen, look and learn. Okay? Shh. No whining just yet. Okay? That can apply to any other naughty individuals in the background, okay? Because I said, naughty behaviour equals certain consequences. I'll be erectifying that later. Hmm, oh, you like that word, erectify. Why? Is it because it stands out big, black and bold on the screen? Yeah doesn't really interest me to be honest. But that aside, besides the language, obviously there's been a language barrier, a bit of breakdown in communication or at least understanding and perception at times, which then leads to these videos being made. Maybe I've broken a world record for the amount of these explanation videos done, but it's all done for a good reason and that's just to keep people up to date, to document other people's behavior over time within these cases so you can always look back at it and see where did it all go wrong with other people and again and naturally I just do this to defend myself because if I had the mentality of oh well never mind I'll just walk away I'll leave it what happens it just builds and builds like a snowball and maybe it gets to the point where if you tried explaining People are long gone by then because they've been completely consumed by false information out there. So if you keep somewhat active here and there, does no harm, okay? So Bob, Bob, Bobby, where are you, Bob? Oh, there you are. So Bob, Farrell, we have a bit of a problem. Now, there'll be people hearing about, oh, yeah, yeah, no. We're not pissing about at this moment in time, so hopefully, Bob, you can understand every single word that comes out of my mouth. Hopefully, you understand that. 
So what am I referring to exactly? Well, I know, Bob, you did a live stream recently. A chaotic one? I don't know. At least the one that appears on the channel page there was a reference to Warlight Wrath, and that, what was that all about? So it appeared as if you were giving your opinion, but in terms of how you worded it, it seemed a bit preposterous. It seemed a bit silly, okay? Now, there'll be people out there who'll be thinking, where's the clip? Where's the clip? Prove it. Show it. Oh, I will. Don't worry. But let's just provide a bit of context first of all. You'll obviously know, Bob, but as for the other people that are present or watching, whether you view his channel or not. As of just recently, Bob Farrell made a reference to Warlight Ref, claiming that Warlight Ref is not dedicated to the Dylan Rounds case whatsoever. That he's not like a true creator or YouTuber in terms of the style that's lacking, which is not doing live streams or call-ins. That's his biggest weakness. It's kind of problematic. Hmm. So what I will do, in his own words, just for reinforcement and a bit of deeper context, I will play the clip now of what Bob said, and then Bob, I will analyse it, give my thoughts and response, and then we need to compare and contrast for sure. Okay, so let's play the clip right now. Say so, um, um, I don't really consider Warlike Wrath as a... Um channel dedicated to Dylan because the shit that he he's not he never does a live fucking show you know it's different if he did a live show all the time but his are his are closed at least mine are open people can come up here and, and yell at me or, or or do what they want so there you go you heard it straight from the horse's mouth I am interested to see what you the viewer think of it you know, whether you are from Bob Farrell's channel or if there are any regular viewers on my channel that just so happen to watch Bob Farrell's live streams. You know, besides the piss take factor, I, I do genuinely want people to think long and hard about what Bob Farrell just said there. Do you honestly agree with it? Let me know in the chat maybe even in the comment section down below. Maybe I could even do a poll throughout this video. Do you, as the viewer watching this video right now, agree with what Bob Farrell has stated? Do you agree that Warlight Ref is not dedicated to the Dylan Rounds case? Do you think the main downfall and weakness with this channel is because no live stream panels take place. As I said, I do want people, regardless of who you are, this is not questioning the ability of people. It's more of interest to the question as to what people genuinely think, okay? Because when it comes to the Dylan Rounds case and community, a lot of people can stab each other in the back, kiss makeup afterwards, and is a constant two-faced personality with people out there. So no pissing about right now. Straight to the point, I'd like you to think long and hard what Bob Farrell just said there. Does it honestly make sense? Is it true what he mentions? Or is it complete BS? If any of you want to elaborate or share any grievances to do with Bob or in support of Bob attacking me, leave your comments down below. As I said, when it comes to this channel, live stream or not, the comments remain open and public, and so does the live chat of a live video premiere. There's no high level of censoring here, unlike other places. There is no need for mods and heavy support like that here, unlike other places, okay? So share your own thoughts in the chat or the comment section down below. I know some people could say, does this matter? Who cares? Oh, well, it's just funny. Well, take it in a serious note what I'm about to say. The fact that an individual out there says such silly stuff like that after all this time and some of you may watch his content and try and follow and learn about the case just track back 
if someone like that comes out with such silly statements like this, as for this video, what it's about, then can you really trust what that person says overall? You get what I'm saying? Is there any credibility behind them? Is there any backbone behind them? Is there any true, genuine foundations behind them when it comes to talking about the case? Not in terms of the background stuff and the support that goes on there, but in terms of actually talking about the case and presenting oneself and the supposed information along the way. See, this is my take on things, and you can agree or disagree if you want. When people come out with such silly statements, when you get someone who's such an impetuous individual as like Bob appears to be right now, can you take anything that comes out of their mouth from then on seriously? Can you believe in what they say? Can you even trust them? That's my point what I'm putting across. Because the moment someone becomes a hypocrite, you can't really trust them. The moment someone contradicts themselves, you can't really trust them. You might be more cautious. The moment someone becomes two-faced, then whatever they do, you just think of the opposite because there's another side to them, right? When you come across an egocentric individual who's very impetuous, lacking, you know, understanding, reasoning ability like Bob Farrell has demonstrated, can you honestly look up to that person afterwards and take them seriously? You get what I'm saying? Because it's all about preserving one's self, whether it be physically, mentally, in terms of being in a community or a case and you're trying to learn about something, certain forces and influences out there, an example of this could demonstrate the negative influence they can have on other people over time because they allow this, they allow that. Because let's not forget, Bob Farrell's channel seems to be a breeding ground when it comes to all those whiners we have witnessed over time that have come and gone and then gone over that way or ran back to their master over that way. There's a reoccurring pattern there, right? So I just want to know your thoughts down below or, or anywhere. All I'm going to do once again is play that clip because I, I do find it a little bit pathetic. Okay? I do find it a little bit pathetic. I'll play the clip one more time just so you can hear it because I want it to be penetrated into your mindset. Okay. Say um, um, I don't really consider Warlike Wrath as a um, channel dedicated to Dylan because the shit that he he's not he never does a live fucking show. You know, it's different if he did a live show all the time, but his are his are closed. At least mine are open. People can come up here and, and yell at me or, or or do what they want. So now to directly respond back to what Bob was basically stating was the one thing that qualifies to why Warlight Raff is not dedicated to the Dylan Rounds case is because Warlight Raff does not do live stream call-ins or panels. So basically to shorten that even more, Bob Farrell is stating that if a person doesn't do live streams about a true crime case, then they are instantly not caring or committed to that case. So basically, if you don't do live streams on YouTube, then you're not dedicated. You're not a YouTuber. You're nothing. Very silly, Bob. Silly Billy Bob. What are you doing? Come on. Get a grip of yourself. Just try and rethink things free. Bob, take in mind what you just said there. Reflect on it and let me know if you still stand by that point. First of all, the reason why Bob Farrell is somewhat impetuous is the fact that when it comes to covering a true crime case, you want some form of clarity. You want a structure to it. If you've got a message to put across, if you've got information to share with people, you want it to be maybe somewhat concise, somewhat informative, deep analysis, possibly polished or somewhat polished. If it's a mumble jumble mess of mm, uh, mm, mm, disconnect, mm, oh, that person's over talking, mm, mm, oh, that voice is reverberating and echoing in the background. Mm, uh, uh, uh. What do you really want to hear, right? Do you want to learn about the case in a somewhat edited, polished way, in a standard video format? 
Or do you want to spend two to three hours listening in for the tiny bit of information and new updates with all the other distractions and chaos going on in the background? On the left, you've got a standard video format, which is a bit smoother, more polished, more refined, gets the message across a lot clearer, more effectively and efficiently. And then you've got the likes of Bob, his live stream, call-in panel, talking at times about nonsense, sometimes about Dylan Rounds, other times not. Not exactly consistent, is it? Neither are the titles, Bob. And we'll be taking a brief look at your channel afterwards just to compare and contrast there, right? So I do believe that live streams can be considered as more interactive, but at the same time, they can also be distracting as well. When I've done live streams at night time and I've done a bit of talking about Dylan Rounds and I've enabled people to, you know, give questions and then I would answer them, that's what I have done, Bob. I have done live streams, simple live streams. So I'm halfway there, Bob, in your standards. <laughs> but the problem what I found when it came to doing live streams was you can get a bit distracted at times you could be answering some questions or you could talk about, you know, what you currently know and your own thoughts, but then you've got to interact with the chat because if you don't, people might get mad. People will have a meltdown. People will think you're ignoring them. Just like Matt Lingo that one time, right? Misunderstanding there, even though it was acknowledged, but from his perspective, it wasn't. Well, that's typical human behavior there, denial. But basically, when you do live streams, you're juggling things about. You're talking about a current case, some current information, but you're having to interact with the live chat as well to keep them happy. You gotta do two things at once. And when I was doing it, yes, I did acknowledge people in the chat, but then that, you know, that ruined the flow with what I was actually talking about. So there was more umming and ahhing. It was a bit more informal. It was a bit more messy, harder to listen to because I kept cutting in and out of the case and then what people were randomly saying in the chat to acknowledge them. It's a juggling act, right? So the flow and the performance is negatively impacted, a negative correlation there, Bob. Hence why I don't do live streams that often. And as well, when it comes to live streams, you're not in as much control. I'm sure you can relate to that, Bob. Yeah. So whether it be distractions going on about, sound, noise, people next door, people outside, whatever, things can happen in real life randomly. That will be caught in the live streams, which is somewhat disruptive at times. It Once again, it ruins the flow. Whereas if you do a standard video, a pre-recorded one, it's edited out, it's cut down, it's shorter in length, it's more informative, there is more of a flow, it's more formal, it gets the message across and people can listen in better and understand clearer. And then once that has been uploaded for quite some time now, nearly every single Dylan Rounds video I've done, I've set it as a live premiere bub. So it's kind of like negotiating, pre-recorded video, but shown to the public, first time ever, live, everybody watches it for the first time ever, and everybody can engage with it with the live chat box on the right-hand side. The only thing with that that's lacking compared to a true live stream calling panel is the fact that with what you do, Bob, people can join the show and talk, talk in, speak in, and say what they've got to say. Whereas on my channel, if people want to say something, they have to in the live chat box via text. Not words, not vocally, but text-based communication. It's still a form of interaction. You can't deny that, Bob, okay? So once again, Bob, I have done live streams, but clearly you have failed to watch them. You've clearly failed to grasp that reality. So it's not a good look already, is it, Bob? Secondly, hopefully you understand as to the format and the reasoning behind why one does what they do, okay? But linking back to the key word about dedicated, dedication to a case such as Dylan Rounds, 
How many videos have you made, bub? Shh, 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 shh. No, no need for whinging or whining, just a simple answer will do to this simple question. Okay, bub? You can make a mental note response in your head, or you can say it out loud to the high lords of heaven, whatever, right? Bob Farrell, how many videos have you made on the Dylan Rounds case? And I'm not talking about half-hearted ones where it's a live stream a little bit about Dylan and then the rest is nonsense. I'm talking about a full-on dedicated focused video, normal video, live stream, short video, whatever. How many videos have you made directly on the Dylan Rounds case? Under 100, maybe under 50 or whatever. Hmm. Ask yourself, Bob, how many videos have Warlight Raph made on the Dylan Rounds case? I know you've got hands, but maybe you won't be able to count on them because you haven't got enough hands. That might put things into perspective already. How many videos have Warlight Raph made on the Dylan Rounds case? If you didn't already know, Bob, I have made over 400 videos on the Dylan Rounds case, almost a video every single day for an entire year plus. Attending almost every single live premiere of mine as well. So besides recording the video in the first place and researching, besides editing it all by myself and not paying anyone off in the background to do that additional work, no, all by, by me, Besides uploading it as well and editing it and finalising, I'm also setting it as a live premiere. So for, for ever how long it took to record the video, I'm spending that equal amount of time re-watching it after to participate in the live chat. I'm doing two lots pieces of work. What do you do? Hit the live. Oh, 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 is anyone there? Oh and talk on from there. In addition to those live streams, such as the most recent one, which we were referring to in today's video, besides your preposterous claim about Warlight Raph and the credibility of him with the case, when you were covering the Dylan Rounds case in that section, whether it be just before or afterwards, it took about nearly 10 minutes for one of your guest people on panel to fumble around to actually find the Facebook post and try and read it off. In the background, you had Jim Terry saying, well, I don't want to speculate. You know, I don't want to talk no more. Where are you? You keep coming and going. Well, what just you be doing right now? Like stray cats screaming in the distance. Bob just sat back. The other dozy person fumbling about. It took 10 bloody minutes to try and find a post from Facebook. Not exactly efficient, is it? Not exactly straight to the point. This is what I'm saying about the flow when it comes to live streams out there. There can be distractions, there can be people that let you down. And I think the key thing that separates one from all out there, okay? More so the Dylan Rounds community. A lot of the time, and you know, viewers, most importantly, people watching this video right now, and I'm sure you can acknowledge it because most likely you were witnesses elsewhere to see it happen at times, that over the course of the Dylan Rounds case and community from day one up to now, people have switched and changed sides. At one point in the past, everyone was all in this together. Yeah, you had a bit of mm, no thanks, Jim Tay, uh, maybe Tyler Feller, uh, maybe Zav Girl, and a few of us, and then the viewers as well, bit of salty pancakes as well, bit of shack lady, and it kept going back, forth, back, forth. But the majority of all these live streams and calling panels, it can even apply to Bella V's channel as well, because she does panels as well, and many of us out there, whether it's to do with Dylan Rounds or not. What's the one thing they all have in common? They all rely and are dependent on having guest on their shows because when they've got no guest it can be considered a bit of a struggle right how many of these people out there can carry themselves by themselves to do a you know structured video formal or informal because way too often i see all these people grouping together and it might go well it might be successful it might be entertaining 
And then you've got this one person stood here right now in a blank looking room, able to entertain over a hundred plus people on numerous occasions, all by me and by myself with nobody else live. One man army. A singular person can carry and conduct themselves appropriately to spread a message and to get the word across efficiently and somewhat successfully at times. And then we got you, Bob Farrell, and others out there that have to have six, seven plus people all together at once to talk and try and make sense of stuff, which is a bit of a mess at times. So I think just the simple fact that a singular individual can be just as effective, if not more, compared to a band of prats, it says a lot. You got what I'm saying? So I think what we can do now, just to get a bit more material, a bit more hands-on, let's just do a side-by-side -side comparison or a slideshow comparison of roughly the amount of videos Bob Fowl has done compared to the amount of videos I have done. So here we are with the first screenshot and proof to put things into perspective. What I do want to stress and say before we go any further, if anybody has suddenly joined right now, if anybody is late to this video, I strongly advise you to rewind back to the beginning so you hear the full story and understand the true context. You know, when people only watch so much of a video, they're not fully informed and then it can lead to unnecessary behaviour by those people. We've seen it all in the past. So if you have joined late, be sure to rewind back to catch up on everything you've missed out on, okay? So with regards to this screenshot, this is to put in perspective as a comparison between Bob Farrell's channel and Warlight Raff's. Bob Farrell claiming that Warlight Ref is not dedicated to the Dylan Rounds case. But in terms of the numbers, that tells a different story. So what we've got on screen, a screenshot uh, from Bob Farrell's YouTube channel, which basically shows his subscriber count and the amount of videos in general on his channel. Does that include private and unlisted videos? Yes, it does include that number as well. Well, at least unlisted ones, right? But that aside, um, 115 videos Bob Fowle has posted, uploaded to his channel. Now, 115, are they all to do with Dylan Rounds? No, not at all. There's a fair few, which are either short videos unrelated to Dylan Rounds, and then others are live streams, which are just hangouts, talking with guests on panel, but not directly to do with Dylan Rounds. Take in mind, Bob, I'm basing it on the clarity of these videos, how they appear, and what's the first impression people get from the message of the title, right? Not all of your videos are directly about Dylan Rounds, and a fair few aren't about Dylan whatsoever. So it's definitely, most definitely, under 90 videos you've made on the Dylan Rounds case. Let's compare that to mine. So in general, on my channel, I have uploaded over 2,000 videos, 2K videos. That's quite a lot compared to your measly 115 videos. But to be more precise, of course, how many on Dylan rounds exactly? At this moment in time, 404. But considering we're talking about the Dylan Rounds case and community right now, this is my 405th video on the Dylan Rounds case. So for Bob Farrell to claim and state that Warlight Raff is not dedicated to the Dylan Rounds case, yet I've made 404 videos significantly more than Bob's under 100 videos on the case. Who's the real dedicated one here? Hmm, exactly. Now this is the thing. As I said, that's 115 videos in total on Bob's channel, in which a fair few aren't about Dylan. But clearly, here, 405, including this one, are about Dylan, because this is a playlist, Bob. I don't know if you're aware of a playlist, Bob, but it's where you can categorise all these related videos with a similar theme or topic and put it all into one, and then people can watch the entire playlist in a specific order 
and learn about it all step by step. The thing is, with your channel, Bob, you just don't have playlist. So really, the way you have structured and organised your channel, Bob, you're as useless as a cone, a roadwork cone, in a, you know, a storm. Blowing all over the place, don't know which direction it's coming from. Almost as useful as an empty bag of chips. Doesn't lead to much, right? There's no organisation, no clarification. You talk about dedication... And it's lacking in other areas. That's what I mean, Bob. I think you need to look back and think long and hard about yourself and what you've recently stated, okay? For further context, besides Dylan Rounds, you know, you might be wondering, well, what about the other 2K? What about the, the rest of the 2K overall? Well, besides 404, 405 videos, I've done 273 videos on the Kenny Veach M Cave case. So a fair portion there as well. And then as for the other videos in the background, about seven to eight of them are of Christine Passe Parker. A couple of them are about Aidan Kloon. Others are completely different topics and themes because I'm a hybrid channel, as I've said previously. Okay. So hopefully that puts it back into perspective, right? So Bob has created under 90 Dylan Rounds videos. I've produced 405. I think it separates the amateurs from the one, right? Now, let's just have a closer look at Bob Farrell's channel on YouTube and see what else shows up there. Here we are on Bob's channel. Let's take it into the perspective of a new viewer. Not a young viewer, we're not going there, but just a new viewer, a fresh face to the Dylan Rounds case community. Let's walk in the shoes of someone coming in for the first time, and this is their first time impression, learning roughly about the case, or at least a channel that is supposedly dedicated to it. So they come on here, oh, Bob Farrell, what's this all about? 115 videos? Hmm, let's go over to the About section and see what he's all about. Description in capital letters. Just sick of all the harassment from everybody on YouTube. Tired of people saying Dylan isn't your son, etc. You don't know him, so move on from this case. So I'm going to do just that in a few days. I have to wait and get what little money I made from this site. Then I'll be changing my phone number and cell phone number. Please, no calls anyone, no texts and emails. My mind is up after 14 months of this lying BS. So... For a general public viewer to come along and see this Bob's About section, it doesn't explain much about Bob's channel. Bob claims to be dedicated to the Dylan Rounds case, yet he doesn't even provide a bloody description in the About section of what his channel is all about, nor his videos and what they're covering. So Bob, you've already failed there. And I know this is old news. This was at the time previously where you were thinking of walking away from YouTube, but then your master and you know others in the background have helped you regroup your thoughts and you've remained since. But one thing you've not updated is your about section, right? So when a new viewer comes on in and checks your about section, failing to inform them what your channel is about, not exactly a good start already, and already kicking it off with a slightly negative tone, the Kathy Waters caps lock on personality trait has appeared with you, Bob, because it's all in caps or mostly in capital letters. Whether that's directly influenced from Jim Terry or Kathy Waters, doesn't really matter. So when people see this, they're not informed and they have a bit of a negative impression to begin with. Not exactly dedication, is it? No, it's very disorganised. It's a bit embarrassing, to be honest. What about the videos? What what if people just skip to the videos? Okay, so videos here. October the 7th, 2023. 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 Oh my God. Oh my God, these are the best titles I've ever heard of, ever. It's really informative. It really lets the viewer know what's truly going on. You've not even made an attempt nor put in any effort to change the title, which is considered pretty lazy. But to be so dedicated to something, it's not exactly showing hair, is it? So when people view these videos, that's if they decide to click on them. It doesn't really explain much, does it? 
Lower down, Las Vegas, Las Vegas, a bit more of a description there, but nothing really significant. And majority of these videos are not about Dylan Rounds, are they? Your standard videos, because you don't roll that way. As for the short section, just some random clips there. I think bingo or something. But the live section is where it's all at when it comes to Bob Fowler, because he does live stream call-in panels and so on. As for the performance of the videos, you can clearly see they are doing well. Let's acknowledge that. But in terms of the message... What is it trying to get across? If we're talking about Dylan Rounds, the dedication towards that, what's the first video or the last one by Bob which referenced Dylan Rounds but also me? It's titled Bored, Just Got the Done with the Laundry. Wow. Wow. What a title. Next one. Let's talk about Dylan's wallet. They found it. Another lie. Right. Okay. So that one's a bit more specific, but still, the, the thumbnail, it doesn't really show Dylan's face. So if someone just saw the thumbnail because of the visual aspect, they're not going to instantly relate to Dylan Rounds. So I know the sunflowers in memory of Dylan and farming, but if Dylan was on the front screen of that thumbnail, it would probably be a bit more relevant. Though you did improve on the title there because it was about Dylan, but you called it Dylan's wallet. You didn't say Dylan Rounds. They're the key words, Dylan Rounds, because it could be some other Dylan out there, right? It could be Dylan Klebold. I don't know. It could be somebody else. But the way you've worded it here, they found the wallet. So even previously when you said, oh, did they, didn't they? I mean, the way it's worded here, you know, even though the text doesn't fit on the screen, the way it's worded, if people saw it for the first time, they would think, oh, it has been found. And then afterwards, here by it hasn't. And then they would link back to you and say, well, why have you claimed it has been found? And then you would say, well, I haven't said that. But the title, at least when you look at it on screen here, it kind of implies that. So in general, with the mindset of other people out there that like to call out my channel and say titles are clickbait, in their mindset, they should be labeling this as clickbait as well, technically speaking, because this is a complete contrast to what Candice Cooley has publicly stated recently. Now, could the wallet be found eventually? Yeah, of course, there's always a possibility. But for the relevancy of when it actually happened, that's what matters the most. This back and forth type mentality does not help things, does it? Hence why the case overall has been so back and forth. From almost all sides, people have effed up. The family have effed up. The LE have effed up. Most of the true crime YouTubers have effed up the case. And so on. Let's be realistic. What other videos down below do we have? Bored and tell me what's on your mind. It's not exactly, you know, arriving a positive, I don't know, presence if someone saw this. I am here. Let's chat again. Same crap, I guess. Crime con. Nothing about Dylan Rounds, even though it was supposed to be about Dylan Rounds. Anything still laughing at Kurt getting caught by Ellen. Not Kurt Wadsworth, not Ellen Berg, but just their first names. Not exactly relevant to the Dylan Rounds case. You've got to include their first and last name. Right? Anything. I am bored. Let's have another night. Blanket. Some more thoughts of Dylan's case. A little bit more relevant there. Our friend Dylan. Same shit, different night. Kurt Wadsworth and Ellen Berg. There you go, including the full names. So, just chatting. Up early. Pop up. Just woke up. Open panel. Bored again. Bored again. Bored again. See? Your earlier videos... Well, not all, actually. But a couple of them, mentioning full names and stuff. Interesting. Oh, boy. I think the easiest way to analyse this, Bob, would be you're very infrequent with your dedication to the Dylan Rounds case in terms of how you present yourself and present your videos to the general public. Your titles are poorly lacking in wording and keywords. Your thumbnails are not always relevant to what you're talking about. That's what the problem is. Okay? So, just to add in, because let's be realistic, Bob Farrell's videos are performing well, but in terms of the keyword dedication to the Dylan Rounds case, for Bob to label Warlight Raph not being dedicated to the case, despite Warlight Raph making significantly more videos about the case than Bob has, but also the fact 
that Warlike Ref has made more relevant titles and thumbnails to the specific topic and talking point of that video, unlike Bob's mumble jumble live streams. That's the theme of this video, the comparisons, okay? We go to the playlist, no playlist whatsoever. So Bob, it makes it harder to find your videos in terms of, you know, trying to be organized. It's it, There's no organization skills going on here, Bob. Very disappointing. Community-wise, it's just all capital letters and a lot of talk issues going on. A few capital letters, others not. Tends to be a bit of drama here and there. What about the channel? This is the thing. When you look at the channel, who people are subscribed to. I've done it with several channels out there. And sometimes when you see who these people are subscribed to, it might reveal a bit more about their personality, possibly, okay? Not always, but sometimes. So first of all, Bob Farrell is subscribed to AV The Entertainer. Tree, tree, tree subscribers. Bit of a coincidence, that. I'm not going to click on him because... I can imagine they'll go right to the channel page and then it might play a video. I mean, we could test it briefly. I oh, know it didn't. Okay. So who's this person talking in a random Zoom class? I don't know who this person is. I don't know what they're about. But Bob Fowler is subscribed to this younger individual. We'll just call it that. I'm going to say younger of appropriate age. Let's just clarify that as well. Bob Fowles, subscribe to Music Hits. Okay, just music. Sleeper Dude 2. Is that to do with vehicles? Yeah. Okay, Sleeper Builds. Bob is subscribed to Journey FI. What's that to do with? Millionaires reveal their best advice. I share my passion for finance. So, like, money making. So, Bob Fowles is subscribed to a money making channel and a PayPal me channel. Okay. How to become a billionaire, millionaire. See, this is the thing. This is an example. Not not this one exactly, but it reminds me of an example of another channel out there that was calling me out at the time saying, oh, you're making money off the Dylan Rounds case. And then I went onto their channel and they had a playlist dedicated to making passive money online through YouTube. And it's like, what a hypocrite. Does that apply here? Probably not, but it just reveals a bit behind Bob Fowle, uh, his interest. Okay, EZ Life Slot Jackpots, so gambling basically, slot machines, that links to him. Bob is subscribed to Heavy Equipment Channel, so construction work and all of that. Also subscribed to Sketchy Learning. Sketchy is here, save 15% off all programs. What's this? B&T Call Cell Disorders. Right, Gland Disorders. Nephrotic syndrome, causes and effects, study the bladder cancer. So that's what Bob Farrell is interested in, bladder cancer. Understanding retina. Neutrophilus. Okay, so whatever that's about, molecules. Bob is also subscribed to True Crime Utah Glorindellen. That's understandable. Um, is there any more here? SB Mowing. Landscaping, is that what it's about mainly? Volunteering, cutting lawns, helping people out. Okay. Joker pranks, all about pranking people. Silent comedian, prankster. Bob is also interested in so Suji. Cars and bits and bobs. A younger male again, this time round. Open government investigations. Why did police lie and kidnap this child? Okay, what about police, maybe bits of corruption, tyrant, tyrancy, okay. The police control with a Lego minifigure. Okay, possible, yeah, police brutality, Bob's interested in that. Pitbull poker, okay, gambling and stuff. Just observing, so Bob Farrell is subscribed to Just Observing. I've heard of this person before, oh my god, who's that person? Um, don't really know who they are, to be honest, but I, I know, I, I think they've had issues with Jim Terry. I don't know if Just Observing is aware that Bob Fowle is subscribed to them. This is the thing. Sometimes people will subscribe to channels that they hate. I'm not saying that this is an example because I don't know much about it, but I'm applying it elsewhere. 
kind of like at a time where maybe Salty Pancakes was subscribed to Jim Terry on Rumble, not because one was supporting the other, it's just to keep track of these channels out there. So do you like when people, it seems as if people have eyes in the back of their head, but they can watch and hear every move by a different channel and call them out on it. It's because they're secretly subscribed or following that channel out there that they hate. So they always get notifications on the latest videos, then they can watch along, then they complain and go from there, okay? Just like how some people become members on other people's channels, not to show support, but become a secret informant, etc. Viral hog. What's this? Watch, buy, and sell amazing videos. So Bob's interested in that. More to do with animals and stuff. Okay. Is that getting frisky with the farmyard animals? I don't think so. We got blessing boys. Oh, God. What's that about? Work hard, bless others. Is this landscaping again? But it's to do with like a family. Right. Bob Fowl is subscribed to... Was this person called Sleeper Cell at one point? Can't keep up with it all. But yeah, there you go there. Take mine, this is all public, if you're wondering. All casino action, not for you. Default profile here. Who is this person? People have said that not for you. This is not coming from my mouth, but from what other people have said. I, I think not for you. People said it was Taylina. And if not that, Kurt Wadsworth, one or the other, has said... These channels and profiles switch around over time, so it is hard to keep track of everything. Jamie Davis towing, Mao's prank, more into pranking again. Bob Fowl follows Lauren de la Guana. What's that all about? Not legal advice. Not a licensed attorney. Well, that's very promising, that. Who's this person? What if, uh, yeah. Home of free speech on YouTube investigations, live interviews. Right, so live interviews, Bob can relate there because he does his live videos. Rumble. Um, okay. Right, so Bob Farrell is subscribed to a channel called Rumble, which provides short videos of people from Tinder or something. You got Charlene, 24 years of age, or you've got Sophie, 25 years of age, within location? No, unfortunately, from Copenhagen, well, I don't know if Bob Farrell, I don't know why Bob Farrell is subscribed to this channel, which is compilation videos or videos about younger women. I don't know what's going on there. Mitt website, some dodgy links there. But that's what Bob Farrell is subscribed to here as he watched these clips, probably. What else do we've got? True Crime Daily, The Voice Finest, X Factor Global. Bob Fowle is subscribed to Cut and Shoot. Also subscribed to MS Disc. What's that all about? Singing compilations there, I guess. Uh, Travelling Fools. News Now, Omaha. Rob Squad Reactions. Reacting, so basically sitting down and reacting, not putting much effort in. Oldies Classic Music. Booming Entertainment. Celebrities and all of that. A Stitch in Crime. Bob Fowl is subscribed to another youngish male, Fred Bayer, with bananas on his head or something. So once again, I think it's to do with pranks. So just in general, Bob Fowl is subscribed to people that are into prank channels. Okay. Does that reveal much about Bob himself? Well, it could imply that maybe he's into doing pranks himself or he approves of others that do pranks. So when you play on the bigger scale when it comes to the Dylan Rounds case community, elsewhere with people pranking and causing unnecessary disruption and distractions, it might say something there. Dan Casey. It's just some music again. Carson Utzinger. What's that all about? Music or clips. Bob is also subscribed to Wrecked and Recovered, Recovery. Bob is also subscribed to Ellen Berg, Inside Information, The Villains, Black Dove, Bob Farrell with Black Dove. Hmm. Best of the Voice, ABC News, ABC One, Utah, MD, Lawn Care again, Music for Life, Top Talent, Martin Zambrowski, Top Our Talent, All Time High, whatever that's about, Streamers, Trolling, so Bob's interested in that. 
Bob has also subscribed to the Hurt Twins with, I'm not going to click on that because it shows two children on there and I don't want it to show clips of that on their channel. Let's not go there because, you know, YouTube can be very sensitive to that. Retty for history. Bob Farrell is subscribed to Kaylee. There's Kaylee. Eventually got their channel back over time. No longer with pancakes, but was once a hardline salty pancake supporter, just as context for people that don't understand. StreamYard, no surprise there. Wonder Lodge, I understand that. Minnesota News, Capital Transparency, Poker, X Factor, Keep Your Daydream, NH Gambler, Watcher of Crazy. So Bob Farrell is subscribed to Watcher of Crazy. Interesting. Crystal Davis, who's that? Some singing, Paramount Pictures, P.S. Ain't news. Bob Fowl is subscribed to someone called Ikhwan Nudun ID, a topless male in some tight shorts. I don't know what's going on there, but I'm not going to click on it. Poker is easy. Cultics, Poker Stars, Michelle Tellison. Ah, I'm living with cerebral palsy. So this is the Michelle that originated on Jim Terry's channel from uh, 10 years ago. Are they missing in action to this day? No clue, but there you go. Jersey Shot Fire Response, Dizzle Motion Sin, City Outdoors, Jean Nosgaridge, GoFundMe. Huh, I wonder why Bob Fowl is subscribed to GoFundMe. Interesting. Music for All, Maples Nay Borhood. I don't know how many subscriptions are here, but we'll just keep going for it. Why not? Cowboys, Marge Vlog, Boring Channel. If you notice anything dodgy, feel free to highlight it. Bob Fowl is subscribed to Finn for t Live. Uh, right, so it's a, a female streamer that does some dodgy videos. Is this OnlyFans or something? I don't know. Twitch. United Kingdom from the UK. So the official stream highlights. So it might not be directly by them, but someone that works for this streamer does this channel on the sideline to promote them. Uh, I'm taking a break. I went to a different country dressed as a girl. Wait, is this person a trans? Creepy guy almost attacked my girlfriend. My girlfriend made me end. So it seems like there could be a bit of dodginess going on there with maybe how they um, choose their attire sometimes on live stream. You know, one of those type, would you call them an e-girl or something? But, you know, if it's a different gender. Uh, but I wonder why Bob Farrell is subscribed to that channel. Another Realm, GG Poker, The Voice Global, Talents Next, many Barefoot. I've heard of that channel before. Mr. Russian Beast. Bob Fowler is subscribed to Crime and Justice. Hmm. Cop Theory. Low Strong Cheap Subs. Cheap Subs. Uh, okay, I don't know what that is, but someone was bent over exposing their stomach. Now, was that of a certain age? I don't know. But that seemed a bit dodgy, that channel. Cheap Subs. What, you subscribe and they subscribe back, or do they give you free subscriptions? I'm not quite sure, but that video that was on there seemed a little bit... I don't know. Battle Family, Fox 10 Phoenix, Chaos Divers, Gravitars Ventures, t -Mol. Bob Farrell is subscribed to Pinky, Inky Pinky, P Inky Unplugged, same person. Fernando Piscay, Cabin on the Hill, Org, Dot, we've heard of him. Johnny Yarbrough, we've heard of him. Grab It Fast, Bob is subscribed to Scott Natal, I've known him for a bit. Stacey's High Limit Slots, Mark Ronson, Idol Global, Nightbot, Heart, Mocha's Got Talent, Jim TV. I guess that's a different Jim TV. Drone B L1. Amazing Auditions, Bus, Grease Monkey, Localish, Retro, Taboo Men. Wait, what's this? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, hold on. Ugh, what's going on here? Taboo Men is a dedicated YouTube channel catering to the gay community. So Bob Farrell is subscribed to a channel which talks about the gay community. Okay, and topless people. About section. For engaging and informative, inclusive content, this channel aims to celebrate and embrace the diverse experiences, perspectives and lifestyles of gay men, focusing on a wide range of topics including relationships, health, wellness, LGBTQ plus issues, pop culture, self-expression, fashion and more. I wonder if Jim Terry subscribed to this as well. I don't know if Bob Fowles passed this on. But, you know, if you have suddenly joined all of a sudden, this 
is what Bob Fowl is subscribed to on YouTube. Okay, there's a bit of a pattern. Jacob Markovich, Fox News next. Oh, a cat! Don't let Kathy or Axel see that; they'll get jealous. Flopito Studio, good vibes. Oh shit! Just when I said don't let Kathy and Axel know about it, she's bloody showed up right there. What a coincidence! Cooking with Brenda, Freddy K, the Nightmare Man. Okay. Make money, Matt. Left undone. Queen B, Bob Fowl is subscribed to. Bob Fowl is also subscribed to JD Jenny and American Honey. Bob Fowl is also subscribed to Tom Evans. If you didn't already know Tom, he subscribed to you. Joshy, East Adel News, PST Music. Ty Corbin, not surprised. Uh, Bob Fowl is subscribed to the Shack Lady. It's your boy. God, how many more has Bob subscribed to? All you can. Andy Boys. I don't know what he's doing in the bush. I'm not going to click. Bob Fowl is subscribed to Lips. A few more um, younger white males. Bob Fowl subscribed to Gina. Bob Fowl subscribed to Kathy Waters and Danielle. Bob Fowl subscribed to me. I've even popped up in, in, the, in the bloody video talking about myself. Johnny Yarborough. Okay. Bob Fowl subscribed to Shani, who's associated with Lincoln Kane. Bob Fowl subscribed to Bella V, Bruno Mars, The Voice, Frugal Family, Zav Girl, Mr. Rex, B. J, bit of play on words there, of course. Bob Fowl is subscribed to Betty Hayward. Anything else? What's this one? A free cap cut, whatever that is. F32. F32, were they called Normadic at one point? They had a bit of a whingy, whiny obsession with me in the past. Twin Mama, Lacey H., Kiana, Starcasm TV. So Kiana came from Salty Pancakes channel. Bob Fowl subscribed. Bob, Bob Fowl subscribed to Jim Terry, Lincoln Kane, Fox News. And finally, towards the end, Marissa. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say Marissa last time? Does it really matter? But you get the idea of the channels Bob Fowl is subscribed to, some of which are very questionable. So hopefully that puts it all into perspective. What I just want to say once again as for Bob Farrell's subscriptions to channels out there, subscriptions can be made private. Well, if they were, you wouldn't be able to see them. Thus meaning Bob Farrell's subscriptions at this moment in time and previous were all publicly viewable. Everything that has been displayed and shown today is all publicly viewable, okay? And all been publicly documented and analyzed. At the end of the day, for Bob Fowler to claim that Warlike Raff is not dedicated to the Dylan Rounds case, just to the simple fact that he doesn't do live streams or call in panels, it's a very silly thing to say, because you look at the form, the structure, the consistency, the frequency, I'm a lot higher up than Bob is when it comes to that area, okay? And I think just for the simple fact, there's been a pattern over time, not just Jim Terry, not just Mr. X, not just Bob Fowler, but some other people over time, People get whingy and whiny because at this moment in time, they don't get what they want here. They think they can go on all of the channels out there. They can just get on here, get on there, get on everywhere. But as soon as they come here with the entitlement of, let me on, let me talk, let me talk, I want to talk, let me talk. No, no, no. They don't like that. They get whingy, they get whiny. And it can apply to viewers as well. It's not just all channel owners. It can be viewers as well. They like getting the voice out. They like hearing the sound of their own voice. They like over-talking everyone and causing disruption, chaos, and BS. It just doesn't happen here. And they don't like that. They don't like lacking that control. It's just one of those things, isn't it? So there are patterns throughout. And I think the subscriptions that Bob Farrell are subscribed to, some questionable ones, some very dodgy ones, I don't know if you could establish a pattern there, but one of the patterns I can establish is obviously the obvious, 
poker gambling. He's into that, those form of activities. He relates to other people that participate them on YouTube. That's what you do, relate, link, watch videos similar to your own interest. So does that apply to the gay taboo channel? I, I don't know, or the uh, gain subs or something with someone bent over, arched back, exposing part of their stomach and don't know what age they are. I don't know, it's a little bit dodgy. But just to think, if there is any resistance from one, others or elsewhere further afar, that can also be adjusted because I think an attitude adjustment is slightly needed right now. Now, originally I thought it would have been a very effective idea, but after looking at some of those playlists, I don't think it is a good idea, right? But even this glove does not want to fit on by itself, okay? Okay. So, yes, there is a glove on right now, and that's more so to protect myself, okay? Make sure it's very tight, okay? It's not going to escape anywhere. Oh, easy. Be on good behaviour. So, there's a complimentary addition, but if there's any more resistance or blowback or backlash, I should say, maybe this could be put where the sun doesn't shine. Oh, what's that, Bob? Doug is in the background on panel. This has already been used. Ugh. I'll disinfect my hands afterwards. I don't know where that's been. Well, actually, I probably could think of something. So, Bob, this is what happens. Okay. If there's any more resistance. Okay. Because let's just acknowledge one last thing. Okay. Has Tyler arrived? Or has the gift from God just simply appeared? Probably both, to be honest. Let's just... There we go. See, I've magically returned back to my normal true form. Same can't be said about other people. Let me just tilt your head up, Bob. Look up, Bob, but not in that way, not in a desperate way. See, the one key thing to acknowledge, okay? Besides you, Bob, at times, possibly spreading misinformation and BS when it comes to the Dylan Brown's case, Besides the fact that, Bob, the way you conduct yourself and appear at times in your approach, you do seem like you could easily be led astray by other people out there and possibly manipulated to a small extent, maybe even brainwashed. Besides the fact that you make some preposterous claims without really backing it up either, just like how you did recently about Warlight Wrath. Besides the fact that you allow the likes of Kathy and Axel on your channel, who really you know, push it out there passionately about spreading misinformation, slandering Warlike Raph's name, defamation of character by calling Warlike Raph a pedo. Just like how Salty Pancakes called Warlike Raph a trafficker in the past. And the Salty Pancakes Potato Picker Brigade and those that have detached from Pancakes Channel ever since all found it quite amusing at the time. Some, well, not sometimes, often, the viewers are just as bad as the channel owner, okay? Just take that into mind. So, Bob, in a sense, your channel promotes misinformation. Your channel, at times, because of the casual, lackluster behaviour, kind of promotes defamation of certain people out there. Just like our Salty Pancakes did. It's not a good look, Bob. It's not exactly professional, is it? It's very disappointing. And when people disappoint me, when, when people act naughty at times or mess about, spaz out, degeneracy, there's often some form of consequence. And to be honest, I, I genuinely don't know if this will be as effective because maybe secretly this will trigger something within where one actually enjoys it. How unfortunate. But nevertheless... Bob, Bob, Bob. Bob the knob, Farrell in a barrel, Bob blob, I don't know, odd Bob, who cares? It's whipping time. What's that, Bob? Bob, don't fall over. Oh, close your other eye. We don't want to lose one. Come on, Bob. Come on, Bob. What you got? You got nothing, have you?
people say that, the skin is turning raw already. Now, it was already that way to begin with. <laughs> what activities have you been partaking in? Now, don't ask. Don't even ask, okay? Yeah? Yeah, you feel the kickback now? What are you gonna say about that, hmm? You're keeping very quiet, aren't you? Awfully quiet. Ah, awfully quiet, maybe secretly enjoying it. Oh my. Doug, Doug, oh, Doug, bloody Doug. I know you're in the background. Wait your turn. Anyway. The thing is, this bell is old and worn. Maybe relatable. But that aside, this is basic treatment. Nothing special, not at all. Come on. What's that, bub? Oh, you wish you were on panel right now so you could share with us your response to all this? No, no, I don't want to be hearing all your moans and groans. Ew! What are you doing? Yeah? That's enough for now. Any more issues, yeah? We have some problems, aren't we? Yeah. Because a spider might come on in. Hmm. You like that? Yeah. Well, well, well. Oh, you want this used glove? <laughs> I bet you do. You're not getting it, though. What a shame. So, after all that debacle, I think it's now time to move on to the exclusive, the incredible show. The interview, as I mentioned, you know? I think quite a few of you now will be very familiar with what I'm referring to and who I'm talking about. Kitty Cat Crew? Anyone there? Hmm? Good. I think it's now time to move on to this exclusive interview right now. Uh, anyway, joining us once again, we have another exclusive interview on Warlike Raf's channel. Unlike other people out there, this is high-end production quality. We got all kinds of props. We got the golden reptiles on the side. We got a peacock there, which Miss T is really impressed by. I don't know why. But, you know, these, these production costs are a much higher demand, more than the likes of Betty Hayward. You know, Betty Hayward, I wish you nothing but the best of luck, but I, I just really couldn't care about you that much. Anyway, that aside. Speaking of which, yes, I can talk in a normal voice. I know it's quite a surprise, isn't it? You might wonder, what am I doing here? In the Shake Shack. The Shack Lady's Shack. No, 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 no. She does not own the copyright to this, this time. Exclusive interview of the cat once again. What I do want to make very clear, and apologies about the background sound, there is a ginger cat around the area because it lives nearby. And I've never really seen it up until yesterday. A ginger cat. Now, my question is, is that ginger cat Axel? Is Axel stalking me? Oh my god, Kathy, what if you put in the water this time? And I'm not talking about Kathy Deep Waters. There goes my waters. No, no, no. We're talking about Kathy, the other one where the hair's a complete tangled mess. Okay, it looks like everybody cats ended up chewing on it and spat it out the wrong way. But yeah, we've got a ginger cat within the area. And I just want to know, is Axel doxing me? My God, and I'm talking in that sarcastic voice because this is a light-hearted video for those little whiners that don't quite understand. But that aside, whilst I'm awaiting that ginger cat to ambush me, I've got my own ginger individual present, and I'll be introducing you to them shortly. But let's just have a catch up on the other original kitty cat, you know? Where is it? It's right here. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Gotta make sure I don't scare. Hello. Once again, very tired. 
Look at that. Mm-hmm. Would you like to talk? Would you like to have some questions? My question to you, do you know Betty Hayward? Did you know Betty Hayward isn't called Betty? It's Lisa? Nodding your head. I saw that. Oh, you're hiding. You're burying your head in the sand because what? You can't admit that Betty Hayward is called Lisa? Hmm? Wait, hold on. Are you telling me that you've met up with Lisa? Or did you hang out with uh, the, the others? Watch your crazy arc. Hmm? Guidance. You're not giving too much away. You know, I bet if I had catnip right now, you'd be telling me exactly what's going on. Very quiet today. So, camera angle's not quite in shot. Are you not going to tell me? You're not going to tell me what's been going on? You've put more weight on this time. Oh my god, petty ass Kathy. Don't tell me kathy has been giving you um, Axel's cat food. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. It might contaminate you. Just zoom out a little bit. You know, has um, have you been stealing any of Miss T's dog food? Hmm? It's hard to tell. See, this is the thing. When we're dealing with these awkward individuals, it's hard to tell what is really going on, especially when they don't talk. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Now, I wonder what would happen if I did my cat meow. Looks like Tyler's train is passing by all of a sudden. Where's that little tail gone? Yeah, we get your little wand. Do you need to be blessed? Do you need deliverance? In the name of Jesus. No. Okay, let's try a cat one. <clears throat> meow. 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 Okay, okay, you don't have to look at me like that, literally. You've got the facial expression of Betty Hayward saying, you can't be serious, right? Oh, I'm being serious. It's not working, is it? This cat knows that I'm just doing an impression. This cat knows that I'm a human or some kind of human. How do you tap into the mindset of the matrix of the kitty cats? Where's the kitty cat matrix at? Do you want a leaf? No? Okay. So we've, do we have any bargaining chips? Will anything work? What, what happens if the snake comes in? You remember the snake, right? Hold on, cat. Hold on, cat. Gotta try and untangle this naughty snake. Ah. Right, here we go. Oh, sorry. Oh, putting your foot down right now. Yes, this is kitty cat training. Come on. Yes. Come on, pounce on it like you're gonna pounce on Dale. Yeah. Yeah, you got, you know, Axel's got nothing on you, kitty cat. This is the kitty cat wars. <laughs> can you let go of my, can you let go of the snake? This is a valuable whip. Whoa, easy there, t Ooh, easy there, cowboy. You bite it on the tip of the snake. <laughs> ch -ch -ch. Let go. Let go of this. I need to be free. My name's Trevor. What are you doing in the name of Jesus? It's not biting the tip. Oh my god, Miss T, this cat is more hungry than you are. Pinky, where's Pinky Inky? I think you need to be knitting some jumper for this kitty cat so it don't get cold. Okay. 
Okay. Ooh, the whole snake's gone. Oops. Let's dangle it from above, okay? I can look how fat the cat is now. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, look at those teeth. Oh, don't get bit there, do you? Bite Betty Hayward's sweet corn. No? No? Ooh, the wiggly. Oh, sorry, the old bloody snakes end up falling down. Bloody hell. Well, I've got you covered. Yeah. Yeah, of course, this is supposed to be interview time and hardly any questions are being asked, but, you know, when you're dealing with such a petty cat, you know, you've you got to try and break the ice. Isn't that right, Iceberg? How many... Do you know what? If anybody is watching this video right now and you've got cats in the background, try and get your cat to watch this video right now just to see what the reaction is. Yes, yes, we have connected with the cat. Doing that cat sound, he blinked. He looked up at me. That's my boy. Uh, where do I put the snake? Good control with the cat, even despite playing with the cat. That sounds a bit weird. Um, despite using the snake with the cat. Whoa, my God, stop shaking your head, you little Indian shaker, salt shaker. Would you like to buddy? Sorry, that must have triggered my inner Indian mode. As I said, that um, that guy that talks about UFOs, I, I probably can understand um, certain accents because I can do it myself. Okay, so let's introduce my ginger friend. Okay, so you've got you got you got Kathy and Axel, the ginger duo. Well, I've got a ginger orangutan. Yes, there we go. Ginger orangutan, bit of a bold patch. Kind of relates to Bob in a way, but this this individual is nothing like Bob though. Overall, long arms. Exactly. Anybody watching right now thinking what the hell's going on? Don't worry. You need a belt, a whip that can be given. So, if I do get ambushed by any gingers, any ginger whiners out there with issues, this guy's going to come along and whack him all over the place. Yeah, look at that, madman. Now, how, how does a cat react to a ginger? How does a black cat react to a ginger orangutan? No, don't worry, this is not racist propaganda. This is just some lighthearted fun. Oh my God, why are you taping so serious? My God. Look, there's the orangutan. I don't think it's really working. Hello. Ch -ch -ch. And the black cat is actually looking down instead of looking at the ginger. Oh. Hello. Oh no, cat! Don't don't attack gingers. That's that's not that's not good. Are you gonna attack a ginger? No. Good control. Kitty cat, kitty cat, don't attack, don't attack gingers. Is this, is this how you're going to treat Axel and Kathy? Oh, he's got a claw on the ginger. Don't worry, ginger orangutan, it's okay. This cat has it under control. But as you saw, if push comes to shove, then the cat will respond and it will claw at the gingers. There we go, so it's... It kind of puts things into perspective. So maybe I don't need a ginger friend to counter the ginger outbreak out there of the Winger and Winers, Kathy and Axel, but at least this black cat is good enough. 
So I think that's enough for now. I think we've <laughs> wasted enough time over and out. So hopefully you enjoyed the video, or at least most of it. As I said, leave your comments down below if you do have any questions or if you do have any grievances. For those that still find it hard to follow or understand certain language and transitions from clips to clips, the majority message of this video is to set the record straight, just to give my thoughts and my response to what Bob was claiming, which was a bit silly. As I said, when we look at it statistically speaking and visually, completely different story. So what will happen next in the Dylan Brown's case community? Anything could happen. It could all go to shit. It could all go downhill, right? But I'm already aware and prepared, right? If other people can be aware and maybe prepared, less likely to get brainwashed. In general, in general, okay? So just expect things to go downhill at times. Expect resistance. I mean, I'm sure there'll be some kind of resistance and kickback here, but it is where it is. The other portion of this video at times is a bit of lightheartedness in between to cut through all the mess in the background. Okay. So that's about it for now. As I said, there are Dylan Rounds videos coming up soon, tomorrow, maybe the day after. Just see which order is the best one to do it in, and providing there are no you know, obstructions or roadblock barriers. Fine, none of that gets in the way. I should be able to keep on going forwards, covering the case, and more importantly, keeping Dylan Round's name alive out there, at least on the YouTube platform. Appreciate everybody that watched this video. And yeah, if you want to check out other videos of mine or other links, there'll be some down below in the pinned comment section. And that's it for now, I guess. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye and good night.